You ready? Because I'm just here for motivational support. If I say it on video, you know, because if I ain't showing it, I guess I ain't doing it. See, look, yeah, that's a good question. When you have two doorbells there, right? Like in this particular case, what do you do? Bring them both. You bring them both. You know? You know this is a single family house, but what do you do? Do you ring both? That's the question. Generally do. Unless it says like second floor upstairs, you know. <clears throat> Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm Marissa. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Daniel, nice to meet you. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike, how are you? I'm here for motivational support. Okay, great. He's new with us. Okay, good. All right, what's up, Daniel? You want to go around back? Yeah, I could. Okay, great. You guys, I'll meet you in the back of the driveway. Yes, you got it. Okay, thanks. Don't be shy. You know, say hi, I'm Daniel. Yeah, but the camera's rolling. What? The camera's rolling. I know. Don't worry. You'll get it. But part of, part of this is sharing is caring. Because you know what? There's other people out there right now watching this that never done that before. And you just did it with the camera on. They've never rang someone's bell, you know, with the boss right next to them, you know, with the pressure, right? Or if they've never even done it by themselves, because they're, they're, they've been a helper or they've been, you know, learning, what have you. So let's find this heat, heat pump pool here. It's a nice pool. That is a nice pool. And it's a vinyl liner too. I have enough experience I can tell, but it's a beautiful pool. Oh, thanks. We, um, the liner has to be replaced. It was replaced. I was gonna say it looks brand new. It does, well, I'll tell you, if you look, you can see um, it was replaced, but they didn't measure right. Uh, they kind of did, tried to do it anyway. And you gotta look at the seating and stuff. Uh, yeah. you know, it is what it is. All right, lead the way. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what do you need, the filter or the heater first? Well, what's wrong? So the heater is not working. Okay. Um, the I guess you guys sent my husband like a troubleshooting document or PDF. We did. Not me. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe it was the pool, the heater. Um, the heater, heater manufacturer. Yes, it must have been the heating manufacturer. They okay. said. So what's been happening is LP is going to turn them. Low heat? pressure. Yeah. So that might be a sign of low refrigerant, according Correct. to the document. So you know. Okay. All right. We'll figure it, it out. Okay. Where so is the your? Where's your pump and the filter equipment? That's around the other side. Okay. It seems like it's on, so we're okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, they long, I need to see the pump to yeah. be on. Okay. Okay, very good. We'll see what's going on. How old is the heater? I'm not sure. I'll let you know. Uh, okay. Nah, we're good. All right. We have this LP. This works as a heat pump? This is a heat pump, yes. Okay. So a heat pump extracts heat from the ambient temperature air and puts it somewhere else. In this case, it puts it in the water. So right now we have LP. We're gonna need the tool bag and let's see if what refrigerant we're using. Take a look at that sticker and let me know where ref what refrigerant it is. All right, one of the first things we're gonna do, we're going to take off this black cover here okay. and we're going to test the standing pressures of the refrigerant. Okay. You should use the drill to fill a bit. There's like 10 of them. It's easier with the Phillip bit. All right, so you'll notice that there's a wiring harness attached to the display module, which is on that front cover, mm -hmm. right? You also see there's a wiring schematic on the inside front cover. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting a pressure, an error code LP, which stands for low pressure. So one of the things we're gonna check to see if we have pressure. One side is high, one side is low. Let's hook up the ga gauges. We've already identified on the rating plate, this is an R410A or Puron based uh, pool heater heat pump. So we'll hook up our R410A gauges to it and just see what the standing pressures are. It's definitely low. It is definitely low. Correct. So we've got the 410. Well, Let's first see if we see anything visible, oil residue, what have you in this. Mm -hmm. We should probably disconnect the power carefully and make sure that nothing's wired wrong and make sure that the power turns off. And let's take a peek under the hood. Let's take off, we need the, the, the screw gun with the Phillip bit on it. 
Let's take off the condenser fan motor and see what we see in there. All right, let's just spin that off to the side. And we're gonna see if we see any oils, which That's I do. Smelling. Which I do already. I'm gonna guess right here on the filter dryer. See that? Mm -hmm. So, let's grab, let's grab the LE Tech and see if we can confirm that with the, uh, with the electronic leak detector. Yep. Filter dryer is leaking. It's one of the reasons why I started installing filter dryers um, inside instead of outside, you know, protect it from the elements. So we're using the LE Tech electronic leak detector. All right, so let's confirm our suspicions that we've visibly witnessed. There you go, say no more. Filter dryer is the cause. May want to check the other side, looks maybe coming from the bottom. Yep, there it is. Yeah, filter dryer shot. So, which see the oils on the opposite side of the uh, yeah. the paint mm -hmm. just peeling off. What a shame, you know, because we have you know a four thousand plus dollar heat pump. Now it's going to require almost twenty five percent of its value in repair. You know, think about it. Pretty expensive repair. Let's go give them the news. There's the repair. Three eighths. Fill the dryer. It's pushing down a little bit. It's all good. It's all good. It'll work. It'll work fine. Perfectly fine. So how do you think you did? Not well. Yeah. You profess to be a great brazer. What happened? I don't know. This torch. I mean. I don't blame it on the torch. Yeah, I'm not blaming it on the torch, <laughs> but I'm not good at controlling. Um, well, how did you braze before? So much heat, just with the regular S7. Oh, that's not way. How you, that's not. That's not way to braze though. Hook up the nitrogen. See how many leaks you got. I already. Can, I already know. I need to fix one. <laughs> Which one is that? The last one. The last one and. Well, the last one you had too much heat on and melt the copper. Yeah. So hook it up and see what you got. <coughs> All right. Got the system charged up. A little bit too much, Daniel. It's five pounds, six ounces. That's 5.7 pounds. <coughs> All right. Let's close the uh, liquid and suction lines of the uh, manifold. Let's close the refrigerant and let's power up. All right. We're going to take some ambient temperature readings now. I got my Fluke 902 FC. We're reading 74.5 degrees. Let's take a peek over here on top of the heat pump. As you can see, we are discharging closer to under 58 degrees. So seven and a half and dropping. So we're right around probably 57. Get a temperature reading of the pool. Let's find a jet. We have a jet over here. All right. Let's get a pool temperature reading first. Seventy-six point four on the pool temperature. Let's get this charge temperature. Let's get it in there. Get the temperature. Looks like we're at 
79.2. Moving it away from us. All right, looks like we got about five degrees. All right, so in summary, pool temperature, 74 degrees. Pool discharge temperature, 81 now. Discharge the top of the condenser, 51 degrees. And my ambient temperature is 76 degrees. It'll be a while before she heats up, but she's working. Place the filter dryer, getting her done.